Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome uh, in the first session of Inside the Kaleidoscope, the Art and the Artist. Uh, we are very, very privileged to uh, welcome uh, as our first speaker, uh, Kala Ramesh Ma'am, who has kindly consented to speak on the haiku on the tanka and to talk about her recent collection of poems. What is um, you know, more uh, wonderful about this program is that it was conceptualized because of Kala Ramesh Ma'am and the idea that she brought into uh, this discourse, the idea of talking about a genre that I think very few people actually know about. Because when art is you know, everywhere, uh, when some form of art is everywhere, it is very difficult to distinguish between what you call the true artist and what Matthew Arnold called the charlatan because uh, everybody is trying to imitate the form and then it's difficult to distinguish between the genuine and the imitation. So I think it is important to learn about a form that has become as widespread as the haiku and which probably, uh, you know, most people understand the least about today. So uh, we are very happy that such a program could be conceptualized. We have among the audience our own students uh, from the department as well as from other departments who evince a deep interest in art and culture. And to invite, you know, great the session and to, uh, you know, welcome our guest today, I would invite our head of department, uh, Professor Yahya Ibrahim, who is also the mentor and the coordinator of the Society for Promotion of Art and Culture at Karim City College. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Basu. Thank you very much. Uh, as you were telling that this is a new kind of a concept that we are going to introduce today. Uh, so a heartiest welcome to all those who have joined today and a heartiest welcome from the core of our heart to our guest, Kala Ramesh. Thank you. As Thank you. Was telling that it is uh, a new kind of a event that we are introducing earlier on the on under the banner of our department that is Department of English. We were doing a lot of events, uh, e-events, but this is a new thing. This is a new thing in two ways. One is that this is for the first time that the two organizations of the college, that is Society for Promotion of Art and Culture and Department of English are collaborating for the first time for an e-event. And another thing which Basudara was telling is that through this event, we intend to bring artists belonging to different fields of art and culture, to talk about different forms of art, to talk about their, their art, to talk about their, uh, their, the, the, their, their writing and their achievements in the field of art. So this is a new thing that we have begun. So I hope and I wish and I pray to God that this may bring some fruits for our students. This may bring some return for our students. They may feel inspired, they may feel motivated through these events. So on behalf of my college, ma'am, on behalf of all the faculty members of my department also, and on behalf of the Society for Promotion of Art and Culture, a heartiest welcome to you, ma'am, and Vashudra. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Beautiful uh, welcome. Thank you, sir. And we are very grateful that Kala Ramesh Ma'am has consented to be with us. She is very well known in the field of art and culture in general. And she is especially known for the extensive work that she has done on the haiku. Apart from writing haikus, she has also mentored many, many courses on haiku writing. Uh, she has helped many, many young artists find their voice in the form. And she is consistently, uh, you know, bringing out a journal which is devoted to showcasing the best voices in the genre. So I would just like to give a formal introduction for uh, Kala Ramesh. A 2020 Pushkart nominated poet, Kala Ramesh is an editor, anthologist, and an external faculty member of Symbiosis International University, Pune, where she teaches the 60 hour Haikai course since 2012 a first in India. Founder and director of Triveni Haikai India, director of Triveni Gurukula Mentorship Program 2001, editor-in-chief of the award-winning Nad Anunad, an anthology of contemporary world haiku, published in 2016, author of two award-winning haikai books, and the third by HarperCollins this July. 
Kalaramesh is adventurous, bold, and has started a never tried before three month teaching program on Japanese aesthetic nuances as seen through the lens of Haiku. A speaker at international Haiku conferences, she has received the WE Trail Desert Poet Award 2020 from Women Empowered India. We are more than grateful that Kaila Ramesh ma'am has consented to be with us this evening and to not just talk about her book, but also on a very difficult and challenging poetic form. Thank you, ma'am, for being here and over to you. Thank you so much to the organizers of Karim College and, and your association here. And I think it is beautiful that you have opened the doors to something which is growing in, uh, in leaps and bounds, I would say, in India. You know, the fish in the water is silent. The mountains are silent. And haiku is season's poetry and nature's poetry. And here I am talking about the wordless poem, the silent poem. And I'm going to be talking and talking and talking today. It's sad. It's sad sometimes how we, to explain things, we need to talk. And then we tell them, we tell my students, it is the wordless poem. The less words you have, the more impact it has. The less words, the less adjectives you put, the less bombastic words you put, the more simple you make it, like a child's language, the more effective the poem is. And that is difficult. Any time we have to do something very simple, it is difficult. Like, um, uh, like uh, Walden Pond, I don't know how many of you have read Walden Pond there. Uh, he says, the, uh, he's, I've forgotten the name. He says, simplify, simplify, simplify. If there are eight dishes in the table, make it four. If there are four, make it two. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And that is not easy. Even in Indian philosophy, we have something about, you know, trying to find the core in us. We say neti, 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 neti. I'm sure in every religion, every scriptures, we have that. It's not this, it's not this. We peel off, we peel off layers until we come to the core, which is what holds the truth. And that is what haiku is about. I'm going to talk a little bit about haiku before I get into tanka, because haiku forms the basis. It is 400 years old. And Basho, one of the revered masters, Japanese masters, he revived it, gave it the importance and, uh, and respectability. Okay, and the most uh, uh, famous uh, haiku of his is ancient pond, or it can be the old pond, the frog jumps in the sound of water. Old pond, the frog jumps in the sound of water. I don't know how many of you are aware, but if ever you talk about haiku to outsiders, they'll say, oh, it's that 575 poem. Oh, that, that frog poem by that famous poet. It has been translated, this poem, the frog poem of Basho, has been translated into so many languages. Even in English, we have multiple translations. It is so famous. And still, in 10 words, 11 words, the poem is over. And for 400 years, it's been rippling in every meet, in every um, uh, uh, lecture, I would say, or in every place where haiku is talk, spoken about, this poem is mentioned. Old pond, the frog jumps in the sound of water. It is a visual poem. And that is where it is different from all the other poems, all the mainstream poetry, all the fiction, all that you've been writing and all that you've been learning and all that you've been analyzing all these years. Haiku stands apart. 
because like I always tell my Simbi students, undergrads, it is not poetry. It is, it is life itself. It is understanding poetry through the five senses. It's an experiential poem. It is not something that is fiction. It is not something that is made up. It is, you, you see it with your eyes, you hear it with your ears, you feel it with your fingers, you, you taste it, you touch it. And then the poem is born. And how is that? We have something called, you know, it is, uh, if I keep on talking, I can keep on talking because for the simple reason, um, uh, books and books have been written about haiku, about the simple poem, how to analyze it, how to make it simpler. But, and still, we have workshops and still we have classes, we have um, lectures on how to write this simple poem. Alan Watts, has said haiku, according to him, is the most sophisticated form of literature in the world. And that, if you analyze it, you would know that over the years, whether it is America, whether it is the Europe or Australia, or, you know, it came from Japan, but it is spread all over and all of us are writing it. If you come into the haiku world, you know we are a closed, united place where we help each other and where we have so many journals and so many um, uh, uh, editors to publish and encourage our work. So what is this? I'll quote one of my poems. Dense, forest, I mean dense fog. The train evaporates, dense fog. The train evaporates into a distant horn. We were in Shimla, it was before I started writing haiku. We were in Shimla 15 years back with my family and uh, we were going down, the, after the trip, we were going down and both my children went rushing and to sit into the, co to get the corner seat. It was like a toy train. I don't know whether how many of you have gone in that Shimla train downhill and uphill to take you. It's like a toy train. So they just ran and got a corner seat, a window seat, so they could look down as the train was going down. And the, just two minutes before the train is going to start, the Javans came in and they said, sorry, this is our compartment. You can take some other compartment. You can go into some other bogey. So we got down and I could see the disappointment in their faces. And that was deeply etched in my mind. 15 years later, when I came into haiku, I wanted to write about it. And I wanted to see how the train, you know, all trains, when they leave the station and they start getting the speed, the driver haunts. I'm talking about 15, 20 years back incident. The driver haunts so that people are not crossing the railway station, the railway track. So that is what the poem is about. Dense fog. It was 5.30 in the morning in the end of May. It was, it was completely, uh, you know, dense. Dense fog. The train evaporates into a distant Horn. Do you all like it? You all understand what it is? Can someone mute and tell me if I'm getting across to you all? Yes? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Yes, so now, yes, thank you. Uh, now, Quickly, if I want to go through Haiku before I get into Tanka, Haiku is 400 years old, but it is taken from Tanka, which is 1,300 years old. Imagine an art form which is 1,300 years old, which is still preserved and people are writing it just in five lines, just in 20 words. And Haiku is just 
nine or 10 words. Can you imagine a poem that is, which stood 400 years, like Basho's poems, which is only 10 or 11 words. And what is 10 or 11 words in today's language? We talk so much, even in WhatsApp, our messages run into 30 and 40 words. So in 10 words, I'm going to the market to buy potatoes, 10 words are over. Can that be a poem? Can that withstand and the, the, the test of time? And so there is technique, there is craft. Otherwise, how can it be done? So we say it is a poem without adjectives. Oh, no, how can that be? We are so used to saying gorgeous and awesome and lovely and beautiful and we pour words, adjectives into our speech. We pour adjectives into our, our poems we write, into our compositions we write. Have you ever tried negating all the adjectives? Try it once and then you'll know. Like see this poem, Old Pond Old, yes, it is, but it is old pond. The frog jumps in the sound of water. There's no adjective. Or my poem, dense fog. The train evaporates into a distant horn. So to write something without adjectives and then to be bare, completely, don't have embellishments, don't decorate your words, make it as plain as you can. That's why I tell my students, a six-year-old child's vocabulary is what is needed for haiku, nothing more. And that is difficult. We call it the child's mind. What is a child's mind? The child's mind is something which is fresh, the child's mind is something that wants to take everything it sees. She sees. She sees a mountain. She sees rain for the first time. The joy she has on her face. It is like the shower that she knows in her, in her bathroom, in her uh, thing. It is a huge shower from the sky. But we have seen it day in and day out. We have seen it for years and years and years. The rains come. We are not as excited. We should be. We should be aware about every change in, in nature. And then we understand what is experiential poems, apart from what is fiction poems. Experiential poems, when they are experienced and you tell the truth, they touch your reader because they've experienced these moments. Isn't that beautiful? It is like the pendulum clock, I always say. The, the, the arm keeps swinging. The arm keeps swinging. You know, if it touches your soul and you tell the truth, it'll swing and it'll touch your reader's soul also. And the mind, they say, wow, this is beautiful. How can something be so fresh? The more adjectives you remove, and have the verb, which is very strong, what happens? It is, becomes a concrete poem and not an abstract poem. All haikai poetry, we have plenty, just like the Japanese said, ekibana, bonsai, landscaping. They brought out so many things. Even in haikai form, we have haiku, which is the shortest poem based on seasons. Senryu, we have short poems, just like haiku, which is a sister of haiku, based on the idiosyncrasies of the human beings. Then we have tanka, which is five line poems, which is 1,300 years old. Then we have haibun, Bun means sentences and hai is taken from haiku. So we have that as sentences with a haiku, embedded with a haiku, which is called a hai bun, which is growing, becoming as famous as or as popular or as um, in demand as flash fiction. Short pieces in 300 words. 
all of you can do it it's so beautiful you can say what you want and then if you know if you start learning how to write haiku then you embed it with a haiku i wish we had more time then i would even be reading but i'll be reading one of the poems i hope um how much time do we have uh basundra okay we have half an hour more yeah yes ma'am we have time yeah. okay so now uh, uh so quickly i'll tell you haiku is a three line poem it can also be two line one line four lines also but we want generally for students we don't complicate it we say it's a three line poem because then it's un, it's clear to understand how two images are juxtaposed there should be craft otherwise a, a ten line poem cannot withstand it cannot be called a poem and that is because two images run parallel if you say dense fog the train evaporates into a distant horn two images it can be early morning the train evaporates into a distant horn but early morning is not as good as dense fog then you see the train evaporating you see how both the images come together if you take old pond the frog jumps in the sound of water old pond is one image and the frog jumping in the sound of water is a second image they are juxtaposed two images running parallel and that takes you back to the movies the films how film directors and producers not the producers the the, the photographers or the editors cut 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 and make your film into they have reels and reels of 24 hours or even um, uh, more than that of 70 80 hours of reel brought into two hours to tell you the story and that is what we do in haiku we have a idea we cut it cut it cut it cut it and bring it to the to the concise and, and show the brevity and then you're woken up you say how is that possible many times when i was into haiku i used to go for a walk and i'll see a i'll see something and i'll i'll want to write it into a haiku and then i'll say my god it's running into so many words it's running across the pages so i'll come back and connect to my comp and go back to that poem and they say how did that poet write it in eight words and nine words there are poems in six words which are popular which are quoted okay now quickly back Haibun is sentences and haiku, and haiga is artwork with haiku, which is again so popular. Then renku is collaborative poetry when ten poets get together, each contribute one verse, and they all form like a jigsaw puzzle. Everything comes together, and is called renku. It's very popular again. So now I'm going to go. i think um, i will be uh, reading my poems and maybe talking about this book i hope it's clear is it upside down or is it clear pasundra it's, it's clear ma'am yes. yes so it is the forest i know okay it was brought out by hapa collins which is which is a huge plus point for us in the haiku world because um, uh, we are generally self published books throughout the world uh no publisher wants to touch for one poetry doesn't pay and second nobody knows haiku and tanka and these things uh for a publisher to take it up and uh, hapa collins came forward and uh, took it and uh, they brought it out and it's been so well done the book is so beautifully done so all the pages and they gave me a person to even work with okay so now i'm going to read certain poems from this uh book and uh, you know tanka if i have to evaluate as an editor i'll be choosing tanka which are different from what you'll be choosing because you're new to tanka isn't it if you take shakespeare's plays your professors will be choosing certain lines which are beautiful and you'll be choosing other lines because you're new to the whole thing it's only after you are in green you know how to appreciate then you chose you see the beauty in the lines that your professors have chosen or or mat or read out and explained that happens with poetry it happens with movies it happens with music 
I know I did Kumar Gandharva's music. I just listened as a uh, as a as a beginner. But when I started learning, then I certain certain ragas and certain compositions. When my teacher said, "This is a beautiful composition. This is a difficult rag, and he's done it so well," then you start understanding the implications and the depth behind art. Okay, so now I'm going to read. Harper Collins had given certain books for uh, review to certain people who were in the mainstream poetry. So there is um, there is one poet called Jayanti Pandey, okay, who is into mainstream poetry, and she reviewed my book. And I'm showing the tanka as seen through her perspective because I thought it might help each one of you to understand how tanka is written. Because I mean, because all of you are outside the Haikai world, okay? And to understand this five line wonder called tanka better, only because you're new to it. Once you start knowing it. You'll understand for yourself which poems you like and which you 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 don't like. Maybe okay. My favorites might be different, but I'm 15 years into this art form and might see it differently. And she, what she did was she gave uh, what to say a uh, the gist of it as a title. We don't title uh, we don't title our poems haiku tanka haibun haibun is the title, but haiku and tanka are not titled. And haiku and tanka and all the Japanese forms don't have a plural, so don't go outside this and say, "Oh, she read uh, many tankas." It's wrong. She read fifteen tanka. We spoke about many haiku. Okay, it doesn't have plural, so please remember that. She's uh, titled it as beginning, slipping into my consciousness, the shape of things. Slipping into my consciousness, the shape of things. Will I be able to recall the storyline in each? Regret. My family wept over our dog's death. My family wept over our dog's death. I weep for those days. I grudged him his early morning walk. My family wept over our dog's death. I weep for those days. I grudged him his early morning walk. Sadness, she says, a visit to our childhood home. A visit to our childhood home. I feel stripped when those old trees see me without my dreams. A visit to our childhood home. I feel stripped when those old trees see me without my dreams. Disillusionment. Today, I think of all my Esther years with you. Today, I think of all my Esther years with you, but were you ever with me at any time at all? Today, I think of all my Esther years with you, but were you ever with me at any time at all? Hope, regaining the joy in every step, regaining the joy in every step. Thirty-two years trail behind her walk to freedom. Regaining the joy in every step. Thirty-two years trail behind her walk to freedom. Fear. Fear. Searching the entire cupboard for that shawl. Searching. The entire cupboard for that shawl feels like I've lost my mother even before her death. Searching the entire cupboard for that shawl feels like I've lost my mother even before her death. Reality. Silence. 
silence in the courtroom. Silence in the courtroom. Our names on the same page for the last time. Silence in the courtroom. Our names on the same page for the last time. You asked and I gave willingly. Now each time I look back, all I see is my giving. Tanka is supposed to be uh, like a like a diary entry. Everything that happens to you, it is not like haiku, which is about seasons and poetry and nature. Here it is about you. It is what you feel. It is generally the I is very prominent here. It is, and that is why tanka, they say, it has got emotion, much more emotion than haiku. It is, it is filled with a, a beautiful aesthetic tool in Japanese called the yugen, which means mysterious grace. You asked, I gave willingly. Now, each time I look back, all I see is my giving. That is what happens, isn't it, in life? When we do something, we remember. What the others do, we forget. But I'm telling from my angle, and this is what it is. Mirth. Our heads so close, I mistake your hair for mine. Between us, our dogs, sure, the bed is hers. Our heads so close, I mistake your hair for mine. Between us, our dogs, sure, the bed is hers. A puzzle. Because every time I go into the coffee lounge, and nowadays when I enter uh, all these coffee places, they are so noisy. Coffee lounge. I reach for the mug, wondering what on earth the others have. So much to talk about. Does it bring a smile? Coffee lounge. I reach for that mug, wondering what on earth the others have so much to talk about. Truth. Why try to fill gaps with anything at all? Why try to fill gaps with anything at all? Won't silence do as well? Why try to fill gaps with anything at all? Won't silence do as well? Summation and the forest I know was taken from this poem because the person, a very famous poet called Michael Mecklentock gave me the foreword, a beautiful foreword for this, my book. And he said, the, and the forest I know is what every time it keeps striking me that this book the title should be the forest I know because it, what is the forest about? It is about it is about uh, degradation or it's about uh, exploitation. It is about uh, forest fires. It is about tragedy. It is about growth. It is about how they protect each other. Everything he says is there in this book. At twilight, the forest I know by sight becomes a forest of sound. Cicada summer. The forest, at twilight, the forest I know by sight becomes a forest of sound. Cicada summer. Now I'm going to read a very short haibun for you. Haibun, like I already explained, it's prose with a haiku. Embedded with haiku is getting very popular. And there was a contest. They said, there are plenty of contests and plenty of journals and uh, we are busy. The, the haiku uh, people, the haikai uh, people are busy, constantly composing. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, they said it has to be within 100 words. Yes, all haibun are short, but mine are around 140, 200, 250, sometimes max 300. To make it 100 words and still be effective, it's not easy. Okay. And I wrote this and it was, I didn't win the prize of course, but it got published in a very good journal in America called the Modern Haiku and picked up by a very, very reputed and respected 
um, Highburn editor, Roberta Beery, who lives in Ireland. Cool Chennai, an uncut rock under the banyan, the memory. An uncut rock under the banyan, the memory. One day in December, a frail man, almost 80 years of age, JK, as he's affectionately called, sits with his eyes closed under the famed banyan tree in his residence. There's pin drop silence as people wait for the master to speak. Birds returning to their nests go in and out of song. 45 minutes later, he looks up smilingly and says, the birds have said everything I wanted to say today. Breathless across the river, the moon where I began. Breathless across the river, the moon where I began. I hope you like this. Hi, Bun. I'm going to now read the last poem, which is a tanka prose. When tanka is embedded with haiku, with, with prose, it's called tanka prose, whereas when haiku is embedded with prose, it's called haibun. So my book, the book I showed you, The Forest I Know, has plenty of uh, tanka prose. Tangled strands. My neighbor, for a month now, she is nearly 80 years old. Straight and sprightly, her body belies her age. It is always her eyes that strike me. Lonely, with a far away look, they seem to talk. I wonder if she was a dancer. On the road a week back, I met her face to face and tried to strike up a conversation. Her mates said, She's hard of hearing and generally doesn't talk to strangers. The row houses on our neighborhood share the walls with neighbors. I've been hearing soft sobbing every night. Ashamed to admit it and the sound made a lullaby of sorts as I dozed off. This morning, there was a crowd around her gate spilling over. Cars were parked on both sides of the road. My neighbor had died in her sleep. It was whispered that her only daughter had not visited her for 25 years. From a branch, silver threads stretch into the unknown. From a branch, silver threads stretch into the unknown. A key to a search for keys to open spaces that have no doors. From a branch, silver threads stretch into the unknown. A search for keys to open spaces that have no doors. I'll be reading Preeti Isola's review of my book. Each Tanka prose piece leaves a deep impress. However, I will select just one of them to show you how Kala brings together multiple aspects of a single theme to elicit a sensitive response from the reader. In Tangled Strands, page three, the narrator shows us her neighbor, a reticent, lonely old woman with expressive eyes. And then comes the revelation that she's been hearing soft sobbing every night, which made a lullaby of sorts as the narrator would slip, drift into sleep. This is followed by the single final scene of a crowd around her neighbor's gate and the news that she had died in her sleep. This builds up to the final unsettling disclosure. It was whispered that her only daughter had not visited her for 25 years. Only a masterly storyteller knows how to create 
the portrait and self story of a person in such few words and allow the reader to experience the old woman's poignant situation the tanka that is linked intimately with the prose and yes shifts to another level of awareness about life mystified me and made me sit up from a branch silver threads stretch into the unknown a search for keys to open spaces that have no doors i come to the end of my reading i hope you all liked it and if thank you ma'am we were spell bound yeah. by the way you read uh, by the poems you chose to read and also by the wonderful way that you could uh, you know relate the idea of the haikai to uh, conventional ecological ideas about minimalism about leading a life you know that should uh, avoid clutter this idea of yes. cluttering both in language in art in life so i believe that you know you have illustrated that wonderfully through your poems and i will begin this discussion by reading uh, a haikai by you and you will tell me where it appears okay why language they ask why not medicine or magic why not i can't hear you you become silent i'm so sorry i'm so okay. sorry yeah 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 yes. so here it goes again why language they ask why not medicine or magic why not something more useful i don't think that's my poem oh, is it not by you it's it's no. written it's by kala krishnan ramesh no that is a different person okay. is that she's a, a bombay person? she's a bombay okay. she's a bombay person i came across I mean, she's, this she's in bangalore she's okay. ramesh I krishnan i came across this particular piece uh, at the back cover of arundhati subramaniam's where god is a traveler yes. and i was reminded you know all the while that you have been talking i was reminded of this and i kept on thinking that this was perhaps by you but yeah, then no, no. It, it it resonates beautifully the idea yes. of language being a medium of healing and yes. uh, as and healing as no other thing can you know it resonates with the idea of all these ideas that you have discussed so far and yes. i hope that it has enriched our students and we are at this moment ready to welcome questions from the audience uh, so you can you know type your questions and we will select filter those yes. questions and we will put it to our speaker so uh, by the time we await questions i believe that uh, sir may have something to say on this wonderful session that we have yes. just uh, yes thank you so much ma'am thanks a lot uh, you know these these poetic forms are quite new for me also because uh, it's true that these are very much our own forms i mean truly asian forms yes. but it's still it's still they are they are getting more popularity and more appreciation and more acceptance in europe and america uh, but yes you uh, are kissing sir you are you people are writing very good and very beautiful haikus and and tanka poetry we are continuously reading you on facebook we are also continuously yes. reading you think sir on facebook and even rk singh sir is also sending some poems to our yes. groups also so certainly these are very new things and it was very beautiful for me personally that the way you tried to differentiate between these beautiful forms of poetry uh, it, it, it takes time very, it takes time yeah yeah it, and and the beautiful and simple way jis tarike se the way you have explained it to uh, unknown people like like and like me so wo bahut khoobsurat tha that was very beautiful and and uh, those uh, beautiful uh, reading that you have done that was also very beautiful thank, thank you, so you. thank you thank so you much. you know uh, students uh, every poem is based on the japanese aesthetic tools i'm not even touching all that i'm not even touching all the rules is riddled with rules i'm not i didn't touch anything okay because uh, but one thing i would like to say is ma ma is the uncluttered like basu oh. just said the uncluttered the uncluttered mind and they talk about ma so beautifully they explain if you see a room with all beautiful things the carpet is beautiful the wall hangings are beautiful the the furniture is beautiful you say wow you say awesome but 
you go back and you don't remember anything. Yes. But supposing, supposing there's just a table and a vase and maybe a rose and that is also fading, it is bent. She, they say, till your death, you remember that, that flower which is bent and which was fading. Mm. And you remember that. Okay, and there was nothing else. It was such a plain, ordinary image. But what happens when you have ma and Japanese have ma in their own living? They just have a tatami mat and then their flooring is just there and their tables are all low. They, they sit in Vajrasan. You know, we do Vajrasan in yoga. They sit in Vajrasan for the tea ceremony and when they are eating. And isn't that beautiful? We have given up these habits and why don't we go back to them? Yes, that, yes, that is children. Yes. Yeah, children. I have a granddaughter who every time sits in Vajrasan so easily and I'm doing yoga now. And Vajrasan gives me so much pain on my anklets. Okay. And my guru, uh, my teacher keeps saying your, your, your calf muscles will become very strong when you do Vajrasan. But doing Vajrasan, keeping it even for three minutes is a torture. Imagine keeping it for five minutes, holding it for five minutes and 10 minutes. Yes. And I, I was into music and a tablis was there, uh, Arvind Kumar Azad, and he would say, we learned by sitting in Vajrasan and playing because we, then we get a height over the tabla and the dagga and we can, we can play. So they were sitting in Vajrasan for four hours and five hours. Oh. We have given up those habits. We have given up all that. We, we know how to sit in a chair. And then we are getting our neck pains and all this because of the computers and all that. Yeah. So ma is the uncluttered. If they say, if you can keep your house uncluttered, won't it be easy to keep your mind uncluttered? You get the knack of keeping your mind uncluttered. And that is what dhyana is about. See how everything relates. Everything relates. Yeah. I can keep on going. Like I said, it's a wordless poem and here we are talking words and words and words into it. But uh, yeah, it any other question? It was good. Basu? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, uh, yes, we have a question from one of our students who asks that, uh, why did you choose this particular form? What made this form stand out for you amongst the various poetic forms that we are familiar with? Uh, that was a real accident. I was into music for nearly 15, 16 years, 19 years to be uh, exact. And I was into Kumar Gandharva's Gayaki. And then uh, I also, the last four months, I went to Shobha Gurto in Bombay and learned Dadra Tumaris and these things. And oh. she died. She passed away. So I wrote my first poem about her, which is in this book, which is in this book. Okay, I wrote a piece about her and sent it to her son. But before that, I wanted to know whether it was good. So I sent it to another writer who's also a musician. And he said, Kala, this has to be published. And he published it on an online journal. And that is when I realized I've been in music all this while. And suddenly I said, my words are getting published. And so I wrote another poem on tradition. And that was published by Bology.com, which is very popular. And the editors told me, why don't you just check your poem before it goes live? So when I went to their website, it flashed poetry lessons. So I said, why am I writing poetry without knowing? That was free verse. Why am I writing poetry without this? And what flashed was Burmese short verses and haiku. Burmese short verses where you have to go up and create something. And that seemed complicated for me. But now coming to think of it, I think the most complicated is haiku. Okay. But Haiku was just in five lessons and she explained it. And that was with, that is how it happened. It was a sheer serendipity accident that happened. And I've, I've become uh, uh, bitten by the bug. I don't, this 15 years now and I'm still into it with even more vigor and even with, before, with even more enthusiasm and love for this poetic form. I hope it's answered your question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. And everybody, you know, all the students here, all members of the audience have been praising your narration skills, okay. uh, your storytelling skills, probably because you told a story about a very difficult genre. And also yes. probably because many of your poems are stories in their own way. 
Uh, yes. Could you therefore, you know, tell us how the Haikai form, you know, enables uh, this this germination and putting forth of a story, the story of a moment, the story also which is which goes, uh, you know, beyond the moment because that particular poem where you spoke about the old woman, uh, you know, is is a story. It's a timeless story basically. So if yes. you talk about this, how to, you know, how do you feel that this relates to storytelling? See, story, a dancer in Abhinaya tells a story. The painter has a story. Every art is, what is art but an expression of your <laughs> inner self? And that is what I've experienced as a musician, as a painter, as a, as a vocalist or as an instrumentalist or a, or a poet or a writer. We all tell our stories. So haiku, if it has only eight words or nine words, we need to tell our story, even in that nine words. And so it has, it, we call it juxtaposition. We call something called the kire, the cut. You know, uh, I live in Pune and uh, all of you might be knowing or you might not be knowing, but we have the uh, Film Institute, which runs for the last so many years, they run a uh, film appreciation course, the intensive film appreciation course for one month in June for outsiders. And I've been dropping my children in school, picking them from school and doing all that and passing FTII every time saying, maybe I should, I'll be able to do it this year, this year, but it didn't happen. In 2012, when my children left and they're all in, in, in their jobs and left home, I applied for it. And uh, 640 students applied for it and only um, 64 got it. I mean, 750 or something applied and only 64 got. And in the introduction, uh, Arti Karkhanis, she said, only one person who's, who's joined us in the 64 is outside the film fraternity. All the other students wanted to be a filmmaker or a producer or an editor or a film writer or a film, something to connect it with films. And here I said, I want to know about the cut that producers bring into their films. How can a film that, that has gone to reels and reels and reels of 40, 80 hours, 70 hours, 100 hours of, of uh, reels, how do they cut, 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 cut and bring it to you in three hours? And I said, that is what in Haiku we do. We take a poem, we take a poem and the, it is called the kire. The kire is the most important tool. If you know how to cut, and juxtapose and then bring two images together. Still it has to have unity, still it has to have resonance. The haiku is done. Like dense fog, it's one image, cut. The train evaporates into a distant horn. Old pond, cut. The fish, the frog jumps in the sound of water. You have hearing, you can see, you have concrete words, there are no adjectives, all those are the rules behind it. But what is most important is the cut. So I take a lot of uh, pain when I'm taking a workshop or when teaching my Simbi students about the cut. We spend so many hours how to do the cut and give them so many exercises so they understand the cut. If you understand the cut, imagine writing a composition for 2000 words. If you know how to cut and bring images together, you can write a beautiful composition or, um, or your presentation in thousand words. You can cut off thousand more words. You don't know how to make that cut. That's why he said, if there are four, if there are eight dishes, make it four. If there are four, make it two. It's not easy. Every time we have someone call over, we're having 20 dishes on our table. Where do we just give four dishes and say, this is it? Now I remember a very good um, music director, okay, dance director, very famous. He was asked, you know, during Newton's, Newton's time, only Newton danced. Now we have Amitabh Bachchan and uh, Rajini Kant, and then we have 60 other dancers behind them. Why do we do this? He said, 
Nutin knew how to dance, so we could concentrate on her. Here, Amita Bachchan and um, Rajikan don't know how to dance, so we distract them with all the professional dancers behind. So to simplify a poem, you need to know the basics. You need to know the rules. You need to know the regulations, the permutations, the combinations of how to make that poem simple. Then it can stand alone without embellishments behind. It can stand like Newton's dance or Newton's movements in her dance. Okay? Yeah? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, there are students who want to know whether there is any punctuation in the haiku and tanka poems. Yes, because I didn't show you all, you won't be knowing. We use the barest of punctuations. We use, at, we don't use exclamation mark because our poetry should show the exclamation mark for you in your mind to put the exclamation mark. We don't put exclamation mark in our poetry, very rare. We don't use colons, we don't see, uh, we don't use semicolon. Uh, we do use ellipses, the three dots, which gives a pause or it shows the cut. And we do use the M dash or the N dash. N dash is small dash and the M dash is the big dash. That is about it. Sometimes the new ones are there, which use double colons and all that, but that is more, that has come over the years now. But otherwise, minimum punctuation, minimum um, uh, bombastic words, minimum showy words, no intellectual, no, inter it's not intellectual, it's not a puzzle. It is the bare truth. It's called Makoto in Japanese, the truth. You talk about the truth and that is difficult. You can hide it, camouflage it and keep on adding all beautiful things and say, people will say, wow, it's great. But to bear everything and show only the truth is difficult. So haiku, like Alan Watts said, it's the most sophisticated, most sophisticated literature in the world. And if you start writing it, you'll understand why he said it and what are the reasons that went behind that, um, uh, um, uh, what to say, I wouldn't say saying, or uh, his observation. You'll understand what it is. Yeah. Thank okay. you, ma'am. And I think we'll take the last question for this session because many students have asked that, is how, uh, you know, as beginners, what suggestion would you give them, you know, uh, if they uh, want to work with uh, the film? Uh, see, as beginners, I would say um, I can I can uh, get Basu. Uh, I'll send Basu the the journals where they publish good poems. See, there's a huge. I'm fortunate. I didn't come into that five seven five bracket haiku. Five seven five is what the Japanese write, but they have reasons for writing it. Like Akai, they say Akai. We say Akai, Akai. They say Akai. So they elongate their vowels, like uh, like we do. If you say kite, it's one. In uh, in Tamil, it is. I'm a Tamilian. It is katadi katadi. So if I have to write a poem in Tamil with kite, three syllables go there. So it depends on the language and haiku. If you're going to write in English, can be brought down to a very concise and brief and uh, uh, succinct. Uh, type of uh, poem it can be brought and uh, that um, uh, you have to I will send certain in case you're really interested I can even have a maybe a, a, a weekend workshop for you all and then get you all into the uh, into the uh, into expressing through haikai lens because that is a different type of lens it is not free verse, it's not, and it, it always, every poet who's a free verse poet, who comes into haiku says, I'm writing better free verse now. We don't, we know how to push out all the unwanted things. That is the most important. How do you push out the unwanted un, um, um, uh, things and uh, make it tell only what is required to tell? And that haiku teaches you, and that, Editing teaches you in, in films. Like I told you, I did that one month course only to see how famous editors cut and brought the story together. You have to know where to cut, where to throw away your darlings, like they say. Okay, so that 
only the important and the most necessary things join to make your complete poem or your complete presentation or your complete um, um, uh, uh, script that you're writing, whatever you're doing. The editing is so important and editing we teach, when I teach seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds and 10-year-olds, the first thing we teach is how to edit their own poem. Imagine at that young age, if they know that there are unwanted things and that can be edited, what a beautiful asset to your writing ability. Not just writing, you go into painting, your mind says, this is not important, that is not important. You go into dancing, you say, this is where I have to cover the stage. This I have to stay in one place and say it. This body moment is too much. Editing, self-analysis comes into, becomes a core uh, in, um, tool in yourself within, and that is going to help you throughout. You don't have to, after this workshop, in case we are going to have the workshop, you don't have to become a haiku poet, but all the things that are taught to you will help you throughout in your life. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. And with this, we come to the end of a very, very fascinating session. Uh, our students have learned a lot. And I think that I would call upon our uh, student representative, the chief organizing secretary, of the Society for Promotion of Art and Culture to formally give the vote of thanks and express uh, his note of gratitude for this wonderful section. Thank you, Ambassador. Manisha, are you here? So you're not audible. Uh, Bashu, I think uh, uh, Kasha is supposed to give the vote of thanks. Okay, okay, okay. Cultural secretary. Right, right. So sorry, Yakesha, I invite you to formally deliver the vote of thanks for the session today. And at the end, I would like I would like to see all the faces, if possible. You can all come. Yes, we can like all that. switch on yes. our videos, and that would be a good occasion for a photograph also. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes. very yes. clear. It would be good if you could be visible to Yakesha. Okay, ma'am. the pressure if it's not possible we can hear you there's some problem with camera oh, no no issues no issues yes good evening everyone my sister kekisha thani literary secretary of society for promotion of art and culture that is pa it is my proud privilege to propose the vote of thanks i would like to thank kala ramesh ma'am for enlightening us with these new forms of poem. It was indeed a very fascinating and interactive session. The narration itself was so relieving. I will surely keep all your words in mind, ma'am. Also, I'm looking forward to read the absolute delight, The Forest I Know. Thank yeah. you so much, ma'am, for such an aesthetic session. I thank our principal, Dr. Muhammad Riyar, sir, for giving us such an enriching opportunity to hear from you, Kalaramesh, ma'am. Uh, I thank our convener of SPARC, Dr. S.M. Yahya Ibrahim, and all the other faculties for being with us today. With this sense of appreciation, I'm grateful to the audience who took out time from their busy schedule to join us today. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you, sir. And thank you, Basu, for this calling. I mean, to give this platform to Haikai Poetry is it's gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. We are thank very you. indebted. And uh, we, I think, sir, chose the right idea.